all right so uh hello and welcome again to river valley farm we have parts more specifically we have the injection pressure regulator valve from napa that's an echelon diesel part and looky it looks just like the one we took out right that's the one we removed and that's the one we got now other than hopefully that one is not bent like this one is and i hope that shows up on camera because that is pretty amazing that it worked at all or for as long as it did so have to say that that one is straighter so that being said i guess it's time to put it in there right wrong drawer right drawer doesn't really matter i could have used a 19 as well as a three quarter but anyway so i've got this piece of it in so now I gotta put this and then it's retainers on. Not a huge deal. Um, they make a special wrench to do these with, okay? Um, I don't own one because I haven't done a whole lot of these. And, oh, if I can get back up on this dumb thing. You know, when you're 6'2", you ought to be able to reach pretty much anything. But I cannot, you know, at least standing on front of the, in front of the truck, you know, up on the truck, you ought to be able to reach anything. But on this one, I can't reach much at all. So there is our piece down there. That's the IPR valve in its place. That valve stem there. So, anyway, um... If you're like me and you don't have that special wrench, I use a three quarter inch drive, inch and an eighth deep socket to uh, slip over that because it'll get on it and grab it and still have enough room. If you've got a little bit deeper half inch deep well than mine, it might work also, but it's gotta be pretty exceptionally deep to reach that. So then anyway, then if you have a cheap pin punch that you really don't care about, which everybody's got a cheap punch that they really don't care about, right? Through the holes in the socket, put your pin punch in there, tighten it, pull your socket off, turn it, tighten it, so on. Until you get it snugged up enough, you can put a regular old boxed end wrench on it and get it tight. Um, as I said, they make a special wrench for this thing. I don't own one. I have ways around it, so I don't own one. The special wrench is probably much easier, so on and so forth, but I don't own one, so there you go. Um, anyway, now we've got to put the solenoid on and the retainers, and we'll be ready to test with the gauge again to see what we got. Okay then. <clears throat> Let's see what we get this time. Hmm. Not as much as we had before. That's not right. I've got a leak on my gauge too. Oh yeah, 
Yeah, right about 2000 it wants to try and start, but it's not starting. So anyway, well, it was a good thought, I guess. I guess I ought to hook up the ICP, put the ICP back in it and see if it will go ahead and start, but I highly, highly doubt it. Um, oops, that horn's touchy. Anyway. And she's getting right there to 2000 and that is it. So, we are back to the ICP sensor in there. Um, I really don't look for it to start, but anyway, we'll find out in a second. Sometimes it shows tack and sometimes it doesn't though. Hmm. Okay. Just one last final stab in the dark before I say we need a high pressure oil pump. Uh, I'm gonna go back to this cam sensor and see if it does me any better or not okay so cam sensor must have been doing weird things guess we'll have to take it and get it warmed up to see what it sounds like see what it does then okay so we have been about i don't know 10 miles or so and we are definitely up to temperature Let's see if it'll start back. Very good. That's what we like to see as far as that goes. So yeah. Thanks for watching. I'll be back later. It's got a couple leaks we're going to have to address, I think. So uh, stay tuned. <laughs>